This is from the specimen paper and it is about the PET scan. Positron emission tomography PET scanning make use of a tracer containing a radioactive material that decays by positron emission. All right. So you're asked to state what is meant by a tracer. So when answering questions like this, right, you have to be, I mean, there's a lot of things you can write about the tracer, but my recommendation is try to stick to the tracer's role in PET scan. Okay. Not so much as the uh, molecular structure of a tracer or why we use a tracer, because they are just asking what is meant by a tracer. So a tracer can be anything, okay? Normally it's a substance that is introduced into the body that you want to scan. Either you feed it to the patient or you inject it into the bloodstream, okay? So a substance that is introduced into the body and it is absorbed by the living tissues because living so the examples that we tend to talk about is the fdg okay the fluorodeoxyglucose and of course only living tissues eat the sugar right i mean zombies teacher there are no zombies <laughs> okay so only living tissues that is being studied would want the substance okay so think about using this to describe the role of tracer in a PET scan. Okay, so it's a tracer that we introduce into the body and uh, it is absorbed by living tissues. Right. Number two, state the name of the particles that are emitted from the body and detected by the detectors during the PET scanning. So this is the uh, positron emission, you know, PET. So this positron emission, um, positron emission means you have beta plus plus another electron okay beta minus or e plus plus e minus and then at the end of the day we will get two gamma okay so in this case it would be the gamma photons all right okay part b Explain how the particles in A2, which is your gamma photons, are created from positrons. Hey, newsflash, I already wrote the equation. Okay, so I will say the um, the positron. So remember how positron was emitted? It was emitted by the tracer. Okay, so positron emitted by the radioactive material. By the radioactive material interacts okay look at, look at the equation that i've written this one is the positron is e plus so positron will quickly find its uh the other and the other particle because positron is an antimatter and it will go and look for electron which is matter so the positron emitted by the radioactive material interacts with the electrons in the tissues your living tissues you and i we are full of negativity no jokes jokes we are full of electrons okay electrons are everywhere i wave my hand like that i'm colliding with millions of electrons okay so there's an abundance of electrons everywhere so very quickly once the positron is emitted it will go and in it will interact with another pos electron okay so once the positron emit immediately we'll see electron already immediately this process will happen Okay, and then you can say, because it's three marks, then I guess I will say, since the positron is an antiparticle of the electron, annihilation, annihilation between these two particles and antiparticles okay will turn into energy in the form of gamma photons okay so each point is one mark each 
the first point, you will say that the positron emitted by the radioactive material interacts with the electron. And positron is an antiparticle of the electron. This one mark. Interacting with the electron is the first mark. The last mark is when you mention there's an annihilation process, and then it will turn into between these two particles. Okay, between these two particles, and then we'll turn the energy into the form of gamma photons. This will be the last part. All right, so we're just describing, basically we're describing the equation. This equation here, uh, we, describe, we describe this equation. All right, okay. Next, oh, part C. Positron can be artificially created by a process in the lab that is the reverse of the process in B. Hmm, interesting. Reverse of B. Are you saying that uh, gamma suddenly become positron plus electron? Positron plus electron? Hmm. Okay. This process creates both a positron and an electron moving at the same speed in the opposite direction. Interesting. So you're saying that now there's a process. It's like it's like the, the reverse of the process. So for this case, right, for annihilation, okay, maybe I shall draw it for you, especially for our friends who are not doing chemistry. Okay, so we have the annihilation process. I'm just gonna call it annihilation. So what we have for annihilation is um we have the positron plus electron with two gamma. In other words, we have this positron meeting with the electron and then annihilation. We have a gamma photon traveling this direction. We have a gamma photon traveling in this direction. Now it's rewind time. You rewind. I can't rewind. Okay, because I don't have a photo editor. I don't have a video editor, man. Miss Ellie and I are a one, two man show. Okay, so we rewind time and then we have now wanting to reverse the process. Two, two gammas, okay, creating this one traveling in opposite direction. So now the reverse process would be to create two positrons. So there is gamma and gamma and then in this process we will have the electron and I mean the positron moving in this direction and the electron moving in the opposite direction okay so from this become this and this one was this become okay from this one become this one so suggest why the two particles two particles are needed to create one positron why can't i just use one gamma why do i need two gammas hmm why indeed okay let's see so why do we need two gamma photons well if we examine this closely we will see that actually your positron and electron has mass so they have the same mass right the mass of all this down here mass of the electron and the mass of the positron is the same okay there we go ah okay so if they have the same mass and they are moving at the same speed in opposite direction it actually means that their momentum is the same because why momentum p is equal to mv so we have the momentum of the same magnitude but traveling in the opposite direction okay so let me scroll down here a bit and write down these two electron because they have the same speed v and v but traveling in the opposite direction i would say that the momentum of e plus and e minus is equal magnitude and opposite direction so what is the total momentum? Zero launcher, equal magnitude, opposite direction. Momentum is a vector, right? Very good. See, your physics is so smart these days. So some of the momentum, final, the product is zero. And from conservation of momentum, I need the initial momentum. Maybe I'll use orange for this one. I need the initial momentum 
to also be zero. For the initial momentum of the gamma to be zero, I need two gamma photons traveling the opposite direction. Teacher, gamma got momentum, man. Gamma got momentum, man. God, remember? Gamma is a photon. Okay, and we can use quantum mechanics, sorry, quantum physics, your De Broglie relationship. Momentum is H over lambda. So, gamma photon has wavelength and it also has momentum. Okay, so think about it this way. So, from here, I will need two gamma photons needed. so that the sum of my final momentum is zero by conservation of momentum, okay? So that, you know, sum of initial momentum is equal to final momentum and momentum is conserved. All right, so the reason why we need two is because we have positron and electron, same mass, same speed traveling in opposite direction which means the sum of the final momentum is zero. And momentum has to conserve. So the initial momentum will also have to be zero. And gamma photons have momentum. We know this from the de Broglie relationship or the de Broglie equation, okay, from your quantum physics. So I need two, they only can cancel out. Okay, two gamma photons needed. And these two gamma photons needed, they have to be traveling in the opposite direction travel in opposite direction. All right, so I'm going to scroll up and write this down. All right, so first things first, we talk about the product. So the two particles, in this case, your positron and electron has the same mass and since they are traveling in their opposite, or since the, the speed is in the opposite direction, speeds in same speed, same speed in opposite direction, the total final momentum is zero, okay? So you cannot just say the total momentum is zero. The word final is important, okay? So it's not just a uh, total momentum, it's total final momentum. And you need these two words. So if you say momentum is zero, it has no context. So you must say total momentum of these two things, of these two electron, E plus and E minus electron and positron is zero. Okay, so whenever you write explanation, be very clear about which momentum is zero. Which momentum are you talking about? So now the total momentum, you know, of these two is zero because it's, you know, we talk about the two particles. Okay, and you can say hence the two gamma photons is needed. so that the total initial momentum is also zero to conserve momentum. You may have a nagging feeling in your brain and think like, did you kind of like, can the momentum be stationary? I mean, sorry, can the gamma photon be stationary? Dude, gamma travels at the speed of light. It's not going to be stationary, okay? So we need two gamma photons. So the total momentum is also zero. And I'm probably guessing that this gamma photon, if I'm going to just uh, update this drawing a bit, we'll say that the gamma photon is coming at each other at the speed of light, cc. Okay, so yeah. So always remember that your positron emission conserves momentum. Whether it's a positron plus another electron and you have gamma shooting the opposite direction, or 
you are reversing the process so you're rewinding it you have two gammas meeting artificially and then you you temporarily create a positron and an electron traveling in the opposite direction regardless momentum must be conserved so if i have two particles moving in the opposite direction i will have two partic two products moving in the opposite direction okay in this case um we assume that the initial momentum is stationary for this one because the electron and the positron is more or less stationary when it's being produced okay this is due to stationary and this one is because they are traveling in the opposite direction okay all right that's it for this particular question the second part requires a bit of thinking and at the end of the day when it comes to this kind of pet scan um it's a lot of facts okay understanding what is going on in different parts of the processes and being able to answer the question by providing the relevant information that they want all right that's it for this example and then i'll see you in the next one bye bye